Greetings, I'm John Spirit. I'm Arch Ezekiel. We will forever curse ourselves for making everything in bulk and it takes forever and god why, and welcome to Sky Greg Super Shorts. We have made, or are in the process of making, two stacks of MB circuits, and Arch has made 32 MB motors, and currently we are just trying to get MB power online. We have two laser nodes here, configured basically identically to the one during our EBF episode, which will take steam from the super tank and power um, two MV steam turbine generators, which Arch will now put down. Are they getting Aren't steam? They? Arch, what have you done? Arch forgot to connect the laser nodes, but we have now fixed that. Not that you can tell when the shaders are on. Alright, Arch, place them down, and this time we'll get power. Ooh, they're spinning. Ooh, we've got power in our medium voltage 16x battery buffer. I think it'll take about 21 minutes to fill this battery buffer. Because it takes 164 seconds to fill up one of them. We have two running, so they can fill two at once. And there are eight sets of two. Ooh, our super tank is... Ooh, he's struggling. We might have to make another of these sooner than later, but it seems like sort of stable. Look at that advanced <laughs> mixer. Our first MV machine, which we could technically use to start working on canthal coils. Besides the mixer, we've also just made the electrolyzer and the extruder. The extruder is convenient because it allows us to make certain things like rotors in only one quick step, but it only works in MV. It's also more efficient for small gears. The electrolyzer is used for random shit TM, just MV recipes. Right now, we're working on the MV cutter, which requires vanadium steel. Whoops, looks like Arch was using chromite dust when he should have been using chromium dust. Chromium dust can be gotten from chromite dust in an electrolyzer, from 7 chromite. We'll just put it in and it'll start working slowly because recipes of the tier that you're working at are always slower because God hates us. And now we can put this chromium into the mixer and we'll get our- God, again? I keep forgetting I need a programmable circuit. On setting 1, and there we go. Wow, that's a long recipe. How long can it take to mix a bunch of dust together? Do the dust get heavier? Lore does not exist in this mod. There just is none. By the way, vanadium steel dust needs a blast furnace. Most of the crazy special ah. ingots do, I think, at this point. That vanadium steel allows us to make the vanadium steel bunsaw blade for the advanced cutter. We're also working on the laser engraver, which in particular needs a flawless emerald. To get those flawless emeralds, we first need to macerate an emerald ore into crushed emerald ore. And once you purify that, you can stick it in a sifter to start looking for different types of emeralds. It'll just take 90 million years. A short time in the grand scheme of things. Look at that, flawless emerald right out the bat. That flawless emerald allowed us to get the laser engraver, but we also need lenses, and one of the lenses is an emerald lens, which we can get in a lathe using an exquisite emerald. It'll only take two minutes! In other news, our super tank was having a little bit of a struggle when both of our steam turbine generators were running, so we decided to make an entire new steam boiler. I kept telling Arch, I'm making some random bronze, I'm making some random bronze, and in the end, the bronze was necessary. In Arch's credit, though, he did say, we probably need another. We need two other lenses, the sapphire lens and the ruby lens. We can get each of them using an LV lathe, but we need the exquisite gems, which require the whole sifting process that I was talking about before. But if we have an MV lathe, which it so happens Arch is making right now, we can use plates, which come from cutting blocks, which you can do in LV. So I'm just gonna go run over and get those blocks. To actually use those lenses, we need to make wafers from silicon, which means we need monocrystalline silicon bulls, which you can make an electronic blast furnace, but I do need some more gallium arsenide dust to do that. The most direct way I've found to get silicon is from silicon dioxide dust, which you can centrifuge from flint dust. Both are relatively quick, and they also give you oxygen, which you need a lot of, Arch says. The best way to get a lot of flint from gravel is to stick gravel in a sifter, which is flint plus a bunch of chances of getting more flint. And gravel can be forge hammered from cobblestone. This is the process we're going to automate. Now that we've got these blocks of gems, by the way, I can throw them into the advanced cutter to get the plates out. And now each of these can go into the lathe and they'll make our lenses. Now we have set up a system here that turns cobble into gravel, into flint, into flint dust, and centrifuges electrolyzes it. We have just turned it on by hooking up two sets of potent fluid pipes, too, because 240 millibuckets is not enough 
for the 256 we need to run four basic steam turbine generators. Now the cobble is entering the basic forge hammer, we can set it to auto output. The sifter will start running and making ginormous amounts of flint. The macerator will make our flint dust. And the centrifuge will start making your silicon dioxide, which we can auto output to start making silicon. The silicon is going into this drawer and the oxygen is going into this super tank. I've also made a ton of gallium arsenide dust, enough for two stacks of monocrystalline silicon bools, which unfortunately take 450 seconds. But when you put them in a cutter, you do get a lot of silicon wafers, so that helps at least a little bit. One yes. reason silicon wafers is nice is because it gets you more diode. More diodes per gallium arsenide, that is. But you do need polyethylene to do it, which may be a project we undertake in this episode. Depends how long it is. Anyway, let's get our bulls. It'll only take, like I said, 450 uh -huh. seconds. God, this percentage is going so slow. Although we can't currently get diodes from these wafers because we don't have polyethylene, we can at least get basic integrated circuits, which are a better version of LV circuits. As far as I can tell, they are cheaper. Before we use these cool new recipes, however, we're gonna make a cool new power system, which uses diesel. Just a few machines, <clears throat> 12 MV holes, which is a lot of aluminum, I'll tell you that, is enough to run 21 diesel generators at MV, which is 21 MV amps, which is like 5 HV amps, which is a lot. The system will eventually be powered by diesel itself, it's mostly MV, but before that we need steam because we don't have the diesel yet and we need to make the diesel. So we're going to power the system with less MV than it's- we need 4 MV amps to power the system, this only makes 2. But we're making a battery buffer, so we're going to bootstrap it by filling up the battery buffer, running the system, getting the diesel, and then powering our 4 diesel generators. The diesel generators, by the way, are called combustion generators, which run on other fuels than diesel, but we'll be using diesel. To run this system, we'll need six advanced distilleries, an advanced mixer, four advanced combustion generators, although I'm making eight, for the reason that the extra four can run our MV blast furnace, HV blast furnace, two basic chemical reactors, two centrifuges, a low voltage transformer, and an electric furnace. All LV. Behold, the, the monstrosity. It is, it is like some crazy steampunk robot. End oil sands ore drops into a basic electric furnace, which smelts it freakishly slowly and fills up these two basic centrifuges, which happen to have emeralds in them. The electric furnace auto output is to the right, but the conveyor that we're using to push uh, into the centrifuge to the left is stronger. Ultimately, however, it's just enough oil sands to fuel both centrifuges, which make 20 oil sands per tick, which is a little more than we need. Sorry, 20 heavy oil. Some of the heavy oil from this centrifuge goes down to a distillery which makes sulfuric heavy fuel. The advanced distillery sends its sulfuric heavy oil to this chemical reactor which uses sulfuric heavy fuel and hydrogen gas to make heavy fuel. It also makes hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide can go into this electrolyzer and make hydrogen. So the hydrogen is actually in a perfect loop. You do get this random extra sulfur from it which I think we were supposed to throw away but forgot to. Arch, make a trash can. Arch just threw it into the void. The hydrogen is then returned to the chemical reactors by way of a fluid regulator, which makes sure to keep exact only 2,000 hydrogen gas. I think it's smart and doesn't care that there's also sulfuric heavy fuel. This is an improvement on at least the functionality of the robot arm in 1.12. Otherwise I would need to filter on this thing, but I don't. Meanwhile, the rest of the heavy oil gets into these quadruple potent fluid pipes, which have four channels. And these fluid pipes take the heavy oil to these five advanced distilleries, all on programmable circuit 2, so that they can make sulfuric light fuel. Sulfuric light fuel is the bottleneck. I could slap down more advanced distilleries as long as I had enough um, oil sand centrifuges to power them, and they would turn so much heavy oil into so much light fuel. There are no filters on this distilleries, which caused us problems at first. Because we're both importing in the heavy oil into the distillery and exporting the sulfuric ass the sulfuric fuel out into the potent fluid pipes above it. So we just needed to wait for heavy oil to become the dominant fluid so that it would never run out. And once it's full, no sulfuric light fuel will ever land into the input slot, ever. Question mark. Instead, all of the sulfuric fuel just goes into the chemical reactor, and none goes into these centrifuges because I have them on disable fluid input from output side. 
This chemical reactor is also subject to the hydrogen-hydrogen disulfide group. Both the fuels get exported into these wooden barrels so that the advanced mixer's fluid regulators can check the fluids and make sure only the right amount of fluid goes into the mixer. I believe if you put a pipe between the chemical reactor and the mixer, it would force fluids through the fluid regulator whether the regulator likes it or not. We experienced similar behavior with item pipes and robot arms, which is why we believe this would occur. We weren't sure, but we didn't want to risk it. Then the mixer dumps its diesel into the super tank. The super tank dumps its diesel into the combustion generators and also into a laser node which delivers diesel to these back combustion generators. They are just barely enough to power the device, judging by the overlay above where the EU is slowly rising in the battery buffer. And we're getting a buildup of diesel. Theoretically, like I said, this system could run 20 diesel generators besides the four it's already running. One of the first things we'll be using it for is to upgrade our MV blast furnace to an e HV blast furnace. But that project will have to occur in the next episode. Before that, just a couple other tidbits about this system. The advanced combustion generator eventually makes its way up to, although we can't see it right now, a transformer that turns one MV amp into four LV amps, which we're delivering using tin cables. Since it's completely buried, I'm going to cheat in a transformer temporarily so that you can see the way that it works. The low voltage transformer either takes in medium voltage in its orange side and exports 4 amps of low voltage in its output sides, or you can input 4 amps of LV and it'll export 1 amp of MV. It starts as transformed down, but you can use a screwdriver to change it. It gives you a little sign when it tells you it's switching between transforming up and transforming down. We just place it smack dab in the middle of the system underneath the electric furnace and put the wires next to it. Here, you can see the transformer right now. Anyway, throwing away the transformer. But yeah, that's the system. We just have lots of power now. And we never need to make one of these steam boilers again. We can just make another of these nightmares and it'll be okay. We can literally just slap it down over and over again whenever we want to. Although, yeah, it is worse. So we'll probably make something much bigger and better next time we do it. But for now, the 5 amps of HV are perfectly fine with me. For now, however, that's it for today's episode. As always, if you have any feedback, we'd love to hear it. We hope you enjoyed!